Greetings. Today I'd like to talk to you about the uh, recent election of Brown in Massachusetts. Um, this is in relationship to the Democrats' supermajority in which they could control all aspects of Congress. They could start to shut down debate. They could shut down the filibuster. Now, who is Brown? Honestly speaking, I haven't a clue. People in Massachusetts seem to like him. From what I hear, he's speaking conservatism. Is he going to follow through on it? I don't know. Is he just another Olympia Snow? Or was John McCain, who might waffle with properly bribed? I don't know. What I do know is right now, well, assuming he sticks with the Republican Party, the Republicans are in a position, and all Republicans keep together on this issue, and I mean every last one of them, there is a potential of them to shut down this health, bail, health care bill, cap and trade, and many of the other progressive goals that Congress and the Democrats have been moving for, and Obama has been moving for. Now, what does this mean to us as individuals? Well, it means that we are entering the stage in which the Democrats are no longer able, and the progressives more specifically, are no longer able to force their agenda through without resistance. Up to this point, their only resistance was the other Democrats, the Blue Dog Democrats, who are concerned about their seats or about being reelected. That was the only restrict only restriction to their power. Um, now we're in a position of stopping it. Assuming Brown holds firm, and along with the rest of the Republicans, and they can't peel off the uh, liberal Republicans like Olympia Snow. Uh, now, what will the Democrats do? Will they suddenly decide to recalibrate and be in the center of the political spectrum? They might try to do that with cap and trade, or at least some elements of them might try to. But in general, it's very predictable that they won't do it with the health care thing. They've invested far, much, far too much political clout in passing this bill to have it fail on them. They do not want to walk away looking like they were failures. So, here we are today. They're going to force through this goal. Now, they have several techniques they can use to do this. One is they can delay the seating of Brown and prolong the election process so that they can push something through very quickly using their supermajority. But that would look politically bad because, after all, they were caught saying that they're not going to do that. And to that end, many of them have actually followed through on that open statement, while others have said that they would. Chances are they will not, because it's too blatant an action. But they still want this bill to go through. So the next ploy they can put in place is to use the nuclear option, as they stated. The nuclear option, as they stated, is basically a rule in the um, congressional structure that prohibits filibuster on time-sensitive um, bills for funding of the government. So they're trying to take something that was designed solely for government funds, keeping government running, and apply it to a law that they want to pass that's totally new. That's not part of the government running. That is another blatant example of not following, of, of basically twisting the rules. There is no real legitimate reason to use it that way. It is not legal, but so is the closed off session, session with hand picked members to consolidate the two bills. Um, uh, that it wasn't legal either. We still have yet not seen the actual bill yet. We have two bills we can look at, and both are bad. Either from the progressives' viewpoint, in which they think that um, uh, the government is forcing you to enrich insurance companies and health insurance companies, or from the conservative point of view, in which it's a massive bureau government bureaucracy which is going to 
heavily regulate all the insurance companies and basically play favorites and uh, create monopolies of mega companies with the intention of ultimately destroying them and replacing them with a universal health care plan. Progressives don't like it because it's not the sledgehammer they wanted. They wanted to crush all political foes and install this plan and install all the progressive ideals of universal health care, control over all aspects of everyone else's, everyone's lives, from where they live to how they live to what they drive to what energy they use to how many children they can have, what they can eat, etc. Um, uh, what they don't realize, again, is this is a form of impatience on their part. They see this as the last chance they'll have a chance to get this done. And the truth of the matter is, is that they're going to get it done anyways. They'll pass something. That's what their goal is. Now the question is, how are they going to get past the Republicans stick together? And it won't work. Why won't it won't work? Why will it not work? Because if they take the 51 majority, simple majority vote, most of the press will spin it as a positive, and uh, they can eventually ignore it, and most of the political people will forget it over time. If they go the route of bribing Republicans to join them, all they need is to get Olympia Snow or someone like her to join their side, and she's done that more than enough times, and they can reward her with the title Maverick, or whatever, or Independent Thinker, or you know, whatever, and tell her, promise her that she's going to get reelected because she's done this, and if she doesn't do this, she won't get reelected. So in the end, I think they'll actually push it through. This one person getting rid of their majority, yeah, it's an inconvenience, but there's a lot of tricks they can play to get it through. Um, anyways, there you have it. Thank you very much. God bless. Have a good day. Bye-bye.